Hey guys, this is Hairball G, and I'm here on my planning map. And, um, so yeah, this is a lot of spawners. Um, these are all the spawners, well, a small portion actually, of the spawners that are going to be used in the waves map. And the reason there are so many is because, um,. I'm going to be using Sethling's MC Edit Filter to combine all of these and to make them randomly spawn about the map. So you'll notice that they're in these like rows. I've made them. And uh, once I've run the filter, they'll actually condense to one single uh, spawner. And uh, they'll just have spawn potentials. So they will spawn, you know, they'll have a potential to spawn at any one of those positions and um, let's I have to put in the position data for each of these spawners but um, it shouldn't take too long and uh, I'll show you how I'm gonna do that so I've installed a mod called in-game NBT edit and it's very very useful I've been using it for a long time and what I can do is just access the NBT data of the entity that I'm looking at uh, in this case, it's this uh, mob spawner. So I can open up the spawn data of the mob spawner. And uh, we're going to put in some position data. So I need to make a tag list. Or a list. And I'm going to add some doubles. And I have post-its with the position data. There are 15 in total. So I have all these post-its on my desk right now. So let's just type in one. Negative 4.5. Um, 76. And it's 55.5. And uh, the point 0.5 is just so that the mobs will spawn in the center of that block. So there we go. And that's one position data down. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and copy this position data. And take... Uh, the, the torches or, are for uh, my reference, so I know which mob spawner I've already tinkered with. And now that I have the spawning data for this, uh, this spawner, I can just copy it to all of these ones and make it go... A lot quicker so I'm just go like this open spawn data and paste in the position data and I can go ahead and do that for this one too so yeah and of course I'm gonna have to type in a different position data for this one and then copy it to all these ones too but once again it shouldn't take that long and I will see you again once that's done. Alright guys, we're down to the last few. Um, I think two more. Yep, we're on the last one. I, I have no idea how long this has taken me, but <laughs> we're done now. Alright. And that should be all of the spawners just randomly check to see yep <laughs> all right <laughs> look look at this look at my uh, chat log it's a lot of a lot of times i used mbt edit and uh, i was playing in survival mode so i wouldn't accidentally uh, break the spawners when i broke the torches all right, so now that all the custom position data is in, uh, I'm gonna back up the world and uh, run Sethling's MC Edit filter, and I'm gonna leave these spawners here for reference when I make uh, other spawners. So I'm gonna change all these guys, but I'll, I'll keep this one. So I'll see you in MC Edit. All right, guys, I'm here in MC Edit. And uh, we're going to combine these spawners. All right, so like I said, we're going to keep these ones for future reference. And uh, select 
that block. Whoop. Oh, hold on, I could just hold down space. Alright. And we'll go to filters. Now where combine spawners. Right now this should combine it into one spawner. Alright. And we're just gonna do that to all of them. Good, good. I'm really glad that Sethling makes all these filters for us map makers. It's very useful. I don't know how I would have done this without the spawners. I could have uh, probably put in all the the potentials and whatever uh, manually. That would have taken a really long time, even longer time than uh, it does right now. You know that just wouldn't be would not be fun. Oop. For some reason, if it's like a semi-transparent or transparent, it doesn't want to grab it. It's weird like that. Go. Oh. So, I'm planning on adding a lot more mobs, like more mob variants, and I think I'm gonna regret that because <laughs> I have to do all the positioning and I have to do this for each of them. But it it'll hmm I don't know. It should be worth it because it'll work for smoother gameplay. You know, more variables in the game make it more interesting. Um I want to talk a bit about custom mobs. Now, when custom mobs first came out, I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is so amazing! I can make, you know, all these different new mobs." But the thing is, <clears throat> enemies in games, you know, you can make. Oh, whoops. <laughs> okay, enemies in games, you can make them stronger. You can make them have more health, more defense. But unless you did I accidentally select unless you make you know them act differently, they're not really that much different, you know, in uh in how you react with them. So with uh with custom mob data, with uh custom armor, you can make mobs with bigger health or or bigger attack you know but it really doesn't change how the player reacts with them and so custom armor and weapons has become merely a like a costume for the mobs a decoration and so I'm trying not to add like variants in in health and damage but I'm gonna try to make them act differently one of the ways I'm gonna do that is adding jump effects or speed effects if a mob has, you know, if a mob is faster, you're going to have to react differently to it. You can't just spam attack cuz it can catch up to you. And with the new skeleton and a zombie updates in their in their behavior, it should be better. And uh, I'm also going to add jump potions so when they do decide to jump, it'll they'll jump really high. It'll be interesting. And uh, you know, not just it'll be not just about spamming attack because that can get kind of boring. I'll try to stay away from those kind of things where you know there's all these mobs but all you have to do is spam attack. I will do my best to make the fights interesting. All right, uh let's let's go back to Minecraft and see if this all worked out. There's a lot less spawners now and it looks like it did work out. Yep. Uh, well, let's just check this. All right, we got our spawn potentials. Damn, that should be 15. I think. Um, here, let's check one of them. 25 health. Yep. So, see the equipment. Looks like the custom data worked out fine, and the position data. Yep. Uh, let's compare that. So 45, 77. Let's compare that to another one. And yeah. So all of these spawners 
if I put them in the map, will have a potential to spawn the custom mobs in any of the locations I uh, set on the map. And why is this guy derping out? Why is... There's, uh, there's spawn data too. Should I delete that? I'm not sure. Because all the other ones, it, it seemed to not keep the spawn data. Yeah, on this one, there's just the spawn potentials. Hmm. Interesting. Well, <laughs> they're done. At least these guys. I'm going to have to make a lot more if I'm going to make the map interesting, like I was saying a while ago. And I think that's it for this today, and I think I'll show off some other contraptions in the map. Alright guys, I'm playing in a Minecraft snapshot, and I have two things that I'm going to show in this. One of them is the chest randomizer, or the loot randomizer that I'm going to be using. Uh, this is a really, really simple setup. Um, when you start the map, it's going to send a signal through the entire map that will randomize the loot in the chests. So, uh, that this is that signal for now, it's just the button. Of course, it'll be bigger in the uh, the real deal. But, as you can see, we got some loot. Now, let's just press it again to see that again. And I got a different piece of loot. So, this is really simple. It's just a dropper with a bunch of loot hooked up to the signal. And it's going to dump one of those items in the chest. And uh, I, can, I can increase the amount of loot that will go in the chest by doing something like say like uh, like this, like this, we'll just cover the edges so it looks pretty, <laughs> something like that, and then we can uh, we can hook those up too, and we'll get like three pieces of loot. So this is going to be pretty useful in the map. Uh, in the last video I did, you saw that there were a bunch of houses around the map that you could open once you had the requirements, and those houses had chests. And now I want to make it so that if you go into a house, if you unlock a house, you have you know a random chance of getting you know good or bad loot. So kind of want to do that, and so this is what that is. I think I might have like two or three pieces of loot per house. I think that's a, a fair amount, and uh, I'm going to create a way so that the amount of loot you get increases by the number of players you have and that I think that's really nifty so I'll show that off in a different video but uh, this is one of the bigger contraptions or more important contraptions in the map this is the door unlocking system so in the last video when I ran around the map you might have seen that there were these red boxes all around it with uh, labels on them now these red boxes are what you uh, throw your item in to unlock a door. So this one unlocks the kitchen and the requirement to open the kitchen in this example is a diamond. So I'm going to throw in a diamond and that'll open the door. Uh, it'll actually destroy the door and in the map I'll have um, a command block spamming the deletion of doors so picking up doors won't be a problem. So just uh, reset that and if I throw in a different item, like a piece of redstone, it won't open the door. I can I can throw in as many as I want, and it won't open the door. But if I throw in a diamond, it will open the door failsafe. Uh, so this is how how this door thing works. I think I might have overthought it. I made it a bit too confusing. But, yeah, I think this might be able to be a bit more, you know, a bit smaller. But it works, and that's all I care about. So what happens is, when you put in the diamond, it'll come through these pipes. I'm sorry, uh, hoppers. <laughs> They're basically item pipes. And if it's a diamond, it will go into here. And when a diamond does go into here, it's uh, just enough to activate this thingy, which will... Uh, send a pulse that opens the door as well as let the hopper drain into this hopper uh, for one item so the one item that goes into it 
will go into this one. So it's fully resettable. And if it's not a diamond, of course, it can't go in here. So it'll be forced to stay in here. And if it's in there for like an amount of time, if it's not a diamond, it will drain into this chest. So I can just toss in all these redstones redstone dust and they'll just dump into the chest and if I throw in a diamond it'll uh, it'll go through this one so there's no problem with uh, clocking up the system at all and I think the diamond go through oh uh, it's it's draining it and there we go so yeah that's how that works and I think I have one more thing to show to you guys it's not too big, but I'll see if I can get it. Uh, well, unfortunately, I thought this was going to work, but it really didn't. So what I was trying to do here was make an insta-kill beacon and an invincibility beacon. Now these, if you had the requirements and you dumped them into the correct chest, uh, they would activate activate insta kill or invincibility for a certain number of seconds. Um, unfortunately, beacons don't work that way. If we look here, there is levels primary and secondary. The primary, um, this is the ID for strength, but there's no way to the, the levels will not go beyond 3. I can set it to 10, for instance, and save it, but it'll just reset itself back to 3. <clears throat> now, what I wanted to do was... Actually, here, let me, let me show you what I wanted to do. Oh. So if I have a high enough strength level, um, set the duration to you know, just like this long. If I have, say, like a level 10 strength, that just basically becomes an insta-kill because uh, it's like two hearts of damage multiplied by... 9 or 10, so it's like 20 hearts. Or or more. I'm not sure, because I'm killing uh, zombies with health of 25. But I, what I wanted was a beacon that if I turn it on, it would give you that strength 10. But And, and also a beacon that would give you a defense of 5, so you become invincible. But it looks like that didn't work out you can't really get it beyond level three or hold on <clears throat> let me let me try something if I okay what do, 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 do. if I... I wonder if I if, like I build a high enough thing I can change the uh, NBT data let's see if it works. Oh, it's gone up to... Oh, I, I, I forgot they could go up to level 4, at least. So yeah, it goes up to level 4. Um, let's set the primary to strength. Oh. That... Strength 2, no. No, that's not what we want. Okay, so I guess levels... It really doesn't uh, change the level of of the of the potion effect. I wish I could do that. I wish that was possible, but it's not. So I guess we're just gonna have to scrap this, scrap all this. Could show you something cool with beacons, though. Check this out. Check this out. Let's turn it on. Oh, make it nighttime first.
<laughs> I really like this. It's a, it was an early addition to this structure planning map. But uh, while we're on the note of custom potion effects, um, I want to say one thing that I found that's a problem. Uh, that, uh, that was a problem when I... Hmm, how do I... How do I say this? Uh, okay, so in potion effects, there's different levels, obviously, and you can make even bigger levels than what's available in vanilla using NBT edit and stuff like that. But uh, one one thing that's kind of impeding some of the progress in this is that, say, I have a level two strength buff, and it lasts you know, for however long it lasts. But if I get a strength 3 strength buff, a uh, level 3 strength buff, it will cancel out the level 2 strength buff and just like clear it out. So if I have a level 2 strength buff for 10 minutes and then I get a level 3 strength buff for um, like for 3 seconds, after the 3 seconds I just won't have a strength buff at all. Now, it wouldn't be that big of a deal if, you know, um, I'm trying to make junglings that would give you buffs as well as some of the the classes having buffs already, but I can't do that because I also want to add items that temporarily give you buffs, and they just, they can't coexist, is the thing. But, the uh, funny thing is, it's this weird mechanism is also helping me kind of because for example the hopper class um, at level 2 he gains this ability well two abilities that it switches his mode or like what how he operates so you can see there's a robot legs uh, robot legs speed and robot legs jump if I drink the speed one I'll become super fast, but if I drink the jump one, I can jump really high, but I lose my speed buff. So that, it works. I don't know if it compensates for the fact that I can't do multiple of the same buff on a god, uh, a character, I'm speaking in smite. Um, so yeah, that's a bummer about the about the beacons getting back on a relevant note beacons are a bummer I'll have to figure out some other way to incorporate that mechanism so I think this is pretty much it for today uh, thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon